Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Here is the smoking gun that proves Hillary rigged the Democrat primary. We now have the smoking gun that proves Hillary Clinton rigged the Democrat primary against Bernie Sanders. A recently unveiled memo shows that the DNC colluded with the Clinton campaign in order to pay off the organization's massive debts. AOL reports. The August 26, 2015 Memorandum of Understanding from Clinton campaign manager Robbie Muck to DNC CEO Amy Dacey details the relationship between Clinton's campaign and the DNC long before she won her party's nomination. In exchange for Hillary for America's HFA, helping the cash strap DNC raise money, the party committee agreed that HFA personnel will be consulted and have joint authority over strategic decisions over the staffing, budget, expenditures and general election-related communications, data, technology, analytics, and research. The agreement resulted in the hiring of a communications director hand-picked by the Clinton campaign. All candidates for staff positions were also selected by Clinton's people. Those people were able to call the shots from within the DNC, essentially blurring the line between the Clinton campaign and the supposedly new federal DNC. As we saw from leaked emails during the campaign, the Clintons were successful in controlling the party's decisions. They smeared Bernie and handed Hillary debate questions in advance. Comment Crooked Hillary and Share This story needs to be seen, but the mainstream media refuses to report on it. We must get this info out to the world. George Bush just broke. Look what insane thing he said about supporting Trump. Former President George W. Bush has been quoted saying that he is worried he'll be the last Republican president and then said that Trump doesn't know what it means to be the president in a book coming out by historian Mark Gupta Grovey. The book is titled The Last Republicans. The book apparently even has I don't like him. I don't know much about him, but I know he's a blowhard. And I'm not too excited about him being a leader. Now, that right there is disgusting. It's also a total lie too considering the fact that George H.W. Bush recently was quoted saying the following line to five different women. Do you know WHO my favorite magician is? David Copperfield. While squeezing their rear ends in a sexual way. To make matters worse, Bush also said the following according to Dan Zak of the Washington Post. It turns out that George Bush Jr. didn't even vote for Trump. This is disgusting. The Bush family are nothing but fake Republicans. They are really globalist Democrats that hate Trump because he beat them. Share this if you never want to hear about the damn Bush family anymore. They are yellow belly traitors that sold off our country. President and Melania Trump visit Pearl Harbor, media stunned to silence by what happens next. Trump is off to Asia on a big trip and the media is in full panic mode. They are raising the stakes daily saying this is make or break for our policy in Asia and if Trump screws it up we may end up in nuclear war. Typical media hysteria. For Trump has already won the big negotiations in the region and this trip is really more to tie up loose ends and take a shared victory lap. Trump won't gloat and he doesn't have to because he already accomplished more than Obama, Bush, or Clinton did in the region. Combined. All our leaders have said they would get tough on China re, fair trade and that they would solve North Korea, etc. That is what the left forgets, if you go back to Obama's and Clinton's and even Bush's campaign platform you will see some similarities with Trump because everyone knows that is what America wants. But until Trump it was just talk from our leaders. In less than a year Trump has China actually hitting North Korea where it hurts. He has them on the defensive on trade, he may allow some bad trade deals with China for North Korea help if he wants to or he can squeeze them later. The Chinese don't know what he will do and that gives Trump an itch. 
also they have already moved on North Korea so Trump is in the driver's seat. For an ace in the hole Trump has done what every past leader said they would regarding domestic companies offshoring jobs but was too timid. He is dangling the carrot to keep them and he has been willing to use the stick to get them to stay. The results speak for themselves on that front. So he can let China have their lousy trade deals, solve North Korea, and use domestic pressure to keep jobs here. In other words Trump, contrary to what the media will tell you, has already won, which means that America has already won, and going to Asia is a victory lap. His first stop was in Hawaii and he was received warmly and met with the U.S. Pacific Command and the governors of Alaska, Hawaii and Pacific U.S. territories. He also took a quick visit to Pearl Harbor. According to Fox News he said before the visit, We are going to visit very shortly, Pearl Harbor, which I've read about, spoken about, heard about, studied, but I haven't seen. And that is going to be very exciting for me. But when he got there he did something that stunned the press into silence. They were expecting Trump to do what all past presidents have done, make it a big spectacle and bore everyone with a tedious speech written by some intern. Not Trump. Instead he did something unexpected and most respectful, he honored the memorial by staying silent. Not one word. Just respect. And a salute. Home Depot's founder comes forward, reveals nasty thing Chuck and Nancy are doing to hurt USA's middle class. Bernie Marcus, co-founder of Home Depot, does not suffer fools. He just puts up with the liberals because it is good for business. And he thinks eventually they will see the light, we just have to deprogram them first. He went on Breitbart Radio and spoke about jobs and how important Trump's tax plan is for the middle class. We created Job Creators Network for one reason and one reason only and that is exactly what the name says, to create jobs in America. More importantly, to make sure that small businesses, which really are the backbone of new jobs in America about 75% of all new jobs in America are created by small businesses and we wanted to make sure that this tax bill that comes through affects them because, after all, you are trying to create jobs, he said. Correct. Small business is the backbone of America and is often forgotten. Especially by the Democrats. But they do so at their own peril because the Hispanic population, besides being Catholic and all about family, also starts small businesses in record numbers. If they are counting on the Hispanic vote to return them to power they are going about it the wrong way. Believe that. The Hispanic vote is actually not spoken for and the GOP's pro-family pro-small business platform is a natural fit for them and could easily win them over to this side of the aisle. Marcus went on to say how tough it is dealing with the obstructionist Democrats and how dangerous their games are when it comes to taxes and the economy. Playing petty politics with something so important is bad for the country. How bad, before he signed off Marcus revealed the nasty thing Chuck and Nancy are doing to hurt the middle class and we all should be furious. I don't understand Nancy Pelosi. I don't understand Schumer, he said, they don't want to see more people hired in America. It's incredible to me. Nancy Pelosi thinks this is going to cost jobs. My God, in my career I've created thousands of jobs. Nancy Pelosi has never created a single job in her life. Share if you agree. This shock secret about MLK's sex life was hidden in the JFK files. When Donald Trump released the JFK files last week, he hoped to end conspiracy theories about the assassination for good. Instead, he revealed a shocking piece of information about Martin Luther King Jr. A document hidden within the several thousand page file dump details King's affinity for group sex parties. The Washington Examiner reports. This document goes into detailed accounts of King's questionable activities, including being involved in events at which there were sex orgies. One account from 1964 spoke of a two-day drunken sex orgy in Washington, D.C., in which attendees participated in sexual acts, 
natural as well as unnatural. Another account from one Negro minister said that at one of King's conferences in 1968 to train black ministers in Miami there was abundant debauchery and fornication. Elsewhere in the report is a claim that the civil rights leader fathered a child out of wedlock. This news is surprising and completely unexpected, particularly due to its presence in the JFL assassination files. It's likely one reason why so many organizations opposed its release, and proof that the government knows all. Tell us what you think of this story in the comments and share. This is really weird.